Okay, perfect. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jamie Bell. I am the VP of Marketing at Workshop. And we are an email marketing platform that's built specifically for internal communications. Uh, one concept that we're really passionate about is this idea of internal marketing, um, which is basically how your marketing, like the company's mission, values, vision, culture um, to the people who work there. And our speaker today is exceptionally good at it. Phil and I worked together for years at Flywheel, uh, and he is without a doubt one of like the most creative marketers that I have ever known. And instead of using uh, that time and talent externally, he uses it uh, entirely uh, on employee facing campaigns uh, and is currently the senior manager of internal communications and employer brand at WP Engine. Um, for context, Flywheel was about 200 employees and WP Engine, I believe, is like over 2,000. Do I have that right? 1,200. Not, oh not 2,000 okay. yet. All right. Not 2,000 yet. On the way. On the way to 2,000. So he was able to scale a lot of the things that we uh, built back at Flywheel um, to WP Engine. And so things have just gotten bigger and better since then. Um, in particular, I think Phil produces the most insanely impressive internal events. Um, especially when it comes to things like all hands meetings, which is what we're here to talk about today, um, conferences, or uh, if you would like to just casually recreate the Oscars for an employee awards ceremony, <laughs> Phil has done that. And today he is going to teach us um, some tips, some tricks, uh, some new ways of thinking about how to kind of spice up your all hands meeting. Um, if at any point you have questions, you can feel free to pop those into the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, and we'll have a good chunk of time at the end um, for Phil to answer those. Uh, Phil, I have been looking forward to this for months now, um, so I'll let you jump straight into it. Killer. Uh, you tease the multimedia content. I, it's the only way I know how to kick things off, so here we go. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so here's a quick story on how I got here. Uh, so I got a degree in journalism in the early aughts because I love the craft of storytelling, of taking a complicated and nuanced topic and distilling it down into language or images uh, that everyone can understand. Uh, but then journalism immediately and quite dramatically uh, died. So I bounced from doing freelance work, writing, wedding photography, marketing for Budweiser and Joan Sutta, and when my soul couldn't take it anymore, <laughs> I, I moved over to doing marketing for some smaller nonprofits and then some bigger ones like the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, uh, something that I would do for the better part of a decade. And because uh, it was awesome and I was back to storytelling, uh, you know, telling the public, hey, you should know about this. And as somebody with an open heart and bad boundaries, I just started doing work for anybody who asked, and eventually those side projects became my entire life. Uh, so for about three years, I ran a full uh, service creative agency called Messenger Pigeons with a good friend. We made hundreds of videos, marketing campaigns, web donation portals for nonprofits like Goodwill, the ACLU, Ronald McDonald House, and a lot of smaller organizations. Uh, but despite uh, doing objectively good and meaningful work for almost a decade, my tank was totally empty. Now, the web portion of my creative agency was built around WordPress using a hosting startup called Flywheel, a company that I partnered with as a beta customer back in their infancy. Um, and I eventually jumped ship and joined them in 2016, completely terrified that maybe I was going to go back to the Budweiser years um, of selling another soulless product. 
Uh, but that is not what happened. Uh, instead, I got to help grow a company that was specifically tailored to help agencies just like Messenger Pigeons get paid for their work. And, and I was lucky enough to help tell that story first externally and then internally. Um, and in the end, I ended up running employee experience, which included a lot of different things, but my, my baby was internal comms. And when Flywheel became part of the WP Engine family in mid-2020, I spent a year uh, heading up a brand new culture and engagement department where I tried to take some of that magic that we built the Flywheel for a crew of about 200 and make it all work for about 1,200 people all over the globe uh, during a global pandemic. And yeah, it was a long year. And over the course of that year, uh, that same gravitational pull of individual contributor, uh, in internal co communications work kind of pulled me in just like it did at Flywheel. And through some weird twist of fate, I was given a second chance to, to make totally off the wall but intentional content for our weekly all company meetings and plan the content for our all company retreats, which leads me to the bio slide. Uh, hi, I'm Phil Jarrett. I'm currently the senior manager of internal communications and employer brand at WP Engine. The WordPress hosting platform currently powering about 8% of the websites most humans uh, visit on a daily basis. Uh, and that's weird because I'm just an artsy dude with crippling ADHD. But the thing that I can uh, that I, I can really wrap my brain around is how to take a bunch of different messages, package them for mass consumption, capture people's attention, and maybe spark a little joy in the process, which leads us to today's talk, uh, the art of the all-company meeting. Uh, no, everything I know about this topic came from observing people who did this work well and, uh, and from a lot of trial and error on my end. Uh, so if you go to your boss after this and say, hey, I need to expense a cockroach costume because a dude <laughs> uh, in a webinar told me so. No, he didn't. Uh, a, you have to have a very cool and patient boss who understands the secret sauce of employee communication. And B, in order to even get to that point, you need to make stuff good enough and compelling enough that finance won't blink when you do something as weird as buying a cockroach costume. Uh, because while all of this stuff is fun, you have a business to run and it can only work when everybody knows what they need to know. Uh, and if that cockroach costume isn't telling people what they know, need to know, they don't need it. And if your company meeting isn't telling people what they need to know, they don't need it. Because let's be real, every meeting, all company or not, is just a spectrum. I was recently chatting with a former coworker about her new gig, and because uh, internal comms is my world, I asked her about uh, their uh, company uh, town halls look like, and they told me that they don't have them. <laughs> Instead, they just have a monthly email that everyone is expected to read. Uh, unsurprisingly, nobody at this company knew what the hell was going on, because where on earth are they going to get that information? We communicate internally because the lack of information creates organizational chaos. And you can only keep people around for so long in an environment like that. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, you can communicate or even over communicate, but do it in a way that completely wastes everybody's time. And I think we've all been the victim to plenty of meetings that happen solely because they've been set up to repeat on a calendar. And you can absolutely tell that the speaker is just reaching for content and it's soul sucking. You burn through the goodwill of your employees, and, and if it's an all-company meeting, you've taken the entire company offline, so you've staged a super, super, super expensive meeting to communicate either nothing at all or something that's much better served for a more efficient email, uh, more efficient format like an email or a Slack post. Uh, so my good friends at Workshop asked me to touch on the concept of cadence, like how often is enough for something like a town hall all-company meeting? And I was tempted to say the answer varies based on the size of your organization, the complexity of your topics and what you wanted to accomplish. But hell, uh, we're one day away from the weekend and I've got a hot take on best practices. The answer is once per week. You should be having these once per week. Uh, and yes, it, part of that is to make sure people uh, need to know what they need to know uh, on the business side in order to prevent that organizational chaos that I, I talked about before. Uh, because if your employees are finding about new features and promotions from customers, you done goofed. Uh, they're going to feel blindsided and not set up for success because they're expected to do their job with incomplete information. Uh, it's not great. Uh, but the companies who fall off the bandwagon of making good all company content on a weekly basis do so for a number of reasons. Uh, one, sorry, I've got a noisy cat. My wife's doing therapy in the other room, so he's got to stay in here with me. Uh, <laughs> so if he screams, that's, you know, hey, just say hi to Remus for me in the chat. Uh, okay. So one of the reasons people uh, fall off is it's a lot of work. Uh, if you're the CEO, you can feel like all of that information lives inside your head. And sometimes it's just like an even wash on time where you get that info out of your head and into the hands of another presenter, or you just take the stage and you do it yourself, right? And before long, you've set the precedent. Every week is essentially a monologue from you. 
It's taxing for you and potentially boring for everybody else. And then there's just the technical stuff, right? You get Zoom glitches, multiple versions of the same presentation deck, last minute submissions or omissions from key presenters. The technology and the people burden of the all company meeting is real. And you've got to invest time and talent into making sure everything goes smoothly. And then sometimes we're just like sitting on bad or uncomfortable news or numbers. You don't have to go to therapy to learn that conflict avoidance isn't really a healthy way to build trust or fix things that are busted. All it does is harbor resentment, especially since our dark organizational secrets are rarely as secret as we think they are. But if you've set the precedent for having leaders or stakeholders deliver an approachable and honest fireside chat about the realities of what's going on, you can turn that dumpster fire into a cozy all company bonfire where you sing camp songs about what approaches you're trying to, to right the ship and if and when you know those things are working. Another likely culprit, no prep work or agenda beforehand. There's faking it till you make it. And then there's the organizational equivalent of bombing at an open mic, you know, like week after week. Uh, later on in this talk, we'll chat about good design and how it extends beyond just aesthetics and making sure that there's clear time and energy behind everything that you have to say. But another underreported pitfall is just assuming all you have to talk about is sales figures or product updates. There is a whole vein of content regarding what it's, what it's like to work at your company, what opportunities are available to employees, or simply just devoting time to create a fun new memory with employees. And we'll come back to those ideas later. But first, here's some content that you might be forgetting when it comes to uh, your, your weekly meetings. It's stuff that you, you know, again, it's not business per se, but it, but it is important. What happened last week? Screenshots, photos, like all of it's fair game. Celebrate your wins and reinforce that people are both working and living their best lives at the same time. Events, virtual or in person. If everybody's in the room, if everybody in the room is invited, make sure they know about it. New hire announcement. Uh, you went through all the trouble and expense of growing your team with a thoughtfully picked new candidate. Celebrate it. Make them feel welcome. Help your team learn more about this individual. Job openings, internal and external. Tell the story of your company's growth by sharing updates about, you know, things that people can invite their friends to come join in, or if they're ready to unlock that next chapter of their career, making sure that they know about it, know that they have the option uh, to get into it. Uh, and I had to include a photo of Rick. Um, just questions, Q&A. Your employees have questions. And also, if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat and I'll try and read them uh, as we're going. Uh, Sally, I will give you more cat content later. I'm sure he'll start screaming in a sec. Um, but, uh, you know, answer a random question from a submission form or have your employees upvote questions using a platform like Slido. I uh, love Slido. Uh, um, so here's the, my first noble truth of internal communications. Uh, you are always conditioning your employees. And I know this sounds like a little shady and weird, but hear me out. Our brains are wired to look for patterns. And it's why when Pavlov rang a bell and gave his dog a snack enough times, the dog began to associate the bell with food. But the more times that bell rings and the food doesn't arrive, the weaker that association becomes. And when you call everyone together and you don't give your employees new or memorable information or information that reinforces the things that they need to remember, you are conditioning your employees in all of the wrong ways. You are teaching them that when we have this all company meeting, it's fine if I'm paying attention elsewhere. It's fine if I'm logged in on my machine, but actually taking a power nap uh, because odds are there is nothing of value for me in this meeting. And when you start canceling your all company meetings at the last possible second, you're doing some, um, uh, several somethings super destructive. Uh, conditioning your employees to believe that this meeting is so unimportant that it can be dropped on a whim, and also giving concrete evidence that everybody was too preoccupied to communicate this week. Um, and that's obviously not where we want to be, right? So when we're, when we're meeting on the value spectrum, we want our employees to be a little bit more empowered, right? Sorry for all the mug content. Uh, this is my love language. Uh, we want them to know uh, that what they need to, uh, we want them to know what they need to know so they can do the things that they need to do. And we also want them to feel like their time is valued, that they are fully uh, respected contributors and as human beings. And we can boil that down into one simple statement. Every single all company meeting you have needs to have a satisfying answer to the following question. Why are you here? <laughs> And you know, here's, here's a first step in the answer, right? This is a no-brainer. Uh, 
you're here because we want you to know information. Like I, I have information that I need you to hear, but let's think critically about what we're sharing and, and how we're sharing it. Uh, the first question is, do you really, do you really need to know this? Uh, the all company meeting is a powerful tool, um, but it's not the only tool in your arsenal. And if you haven't uh, segmented your employees, email lists and Slack channels by region, by department, by interest, you are off to a very bad start. Uh, when you haven't built out the infrastructure to get your messages delivered to just the people who need to know it, you run the risk of oversharing. And then we're back to doing what I warned about before, trained to believe, <laughs> trained people to believe that what you're saying doesn't actually pertain to them. Uh, and, uh, and this is, and Lauren, thank you for bringing up your comment about how you do this at scale. Like we ran into this exact problem, uh, problem. Uh, Jimmy mentioned it before, came from 200 to 1200. <laughs> that was a big, big leap. And, uh, this is the thing that like we saw in, in Texas, right? So WP Engines is a Texas company. Uh, they scaled globally at such a fast rate for so many multiple years. Uh, their internal email marketing software changed, the company messaging application say, it changed. Uh, and when it no longer felt appropriate, right, to use that weekly all, all company town hall meeting to talk about what was going on in the Austin area, to talk about people's anniversaries or birthdays, like there suddenly wasn't a clear way to get that information in front of the roughly two thirds of the company working from the Texas hub, especially during the pandemic. And our emails were getting overlooked. Slack messages would get buried by new content. And overall, the messages weren't sticking like they had before. So we had to get creative. And I'm just going to apologize for this one in advance. It's time for y'all. You're having a taco on the way to y'all. yourself because we don't want to hear you chewing y'all okay i'm not gonna make you listen to the entire y'all hall song but it is great and that, that is all employee content we had an employee videographer go and, and film some of that stuff we had an employee down in texas write our little jingle for us uh pretty pretty amazing and so once a month, we now host Y'all Hall for Texas, Omaha City Hall for Nebraska also has its own jingle, No Hall for our virtual employees because they don't have any halls. Uh, and we have like half a dozen other regional meetings to make sure we're bringing those communities together and making sure the right information is getting to the right people. We try and keep them short, snappy, uh, and entertaining. Um, but let's go ahead and do assume we've done a good job of curating content down to just the stuff that everybody needs to know. Are we packaging it in a way uh, that sticks? Uh, and anonymous attendee, I will get to your question in a second because it, it, I do have an answer for this and it's, and it's coming up in just a second. So one of my favorite company values at Flywheel, the thing got ported over to WP Engine was design matters. And uh, while I'm a big believer in making things look polished and pretty, like that's not the whole picture here. Making design matter is about making things intentional and well-crafted for your audience. We are often prisoners to the presentation tools which we use and the templates that come uh, stock with those applications. Uh, you see stuff like this everywhere in the corporate world. And let me do a speed run on why there isn't an ounce of intentionality behind a slide like this one. Uh, for starters, like what's going on with a businessman doing some Harry Potter spell on what might be the stock market? Uh, where is your company's distinct look, feel, flavor in a slide like this? You're just another unflavored oatmeal of a company using imagery of faceless strangers to communicate about things that are actually a reality for your employees. Uh, but they're looking at a business wizard finger and reading through four sentences of text plus headings. Uh, and instead of hearing the words that you're saying uh, while you speak, they're, they're reading. And I, I want to hit that point like hard because like this drives me nuts in presentations. Like people aren't listening when they're reading. And if you're reading your slides, by definition, that presentation could have been, been an email. If you're doing it, stop. <laughs> Do not waste people's time with slowless slides and text heavy slides. Um, make design matter. Uh, it's like giving someone you care about a handwritten letter or a gift that perfectly suits their taste. Uh, and more importantly, if it's been made with love, it's going to register as new information and it's likely to stick. So when Flywheel and WP Engine combined our organizations, we also combined our values. And I made a lot of noise at the time about the importance of making them unique and well-designed. Why? Because people are way more likely to remember them when they like seeing them. 
And aside from just reading the text, there's a visual cue that says, hey, we're talking about being customer inspired. And you can take this same uh, principle and apply it elsewhere. Um, this is a graphic treatment that we did in 2020 at Flyville um, for, your, for our company's strategic pillars and, and company objectives. Are, are you going to be referencing this stuff throughout the calendar year? Have a look and feel for it. Reference it frequently. And again, it helps people know exactly what you're talking about and why it matters. You know, repetition is, is a big part of the name of the game. Um, but again, having those visual cues, it's just one more bell, one more association that you can kind of give the people say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm delivering something thoughtful and meaningful and intentional. And it's something that we've talked about before. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think that you can also take this to the stuff that you talk about on a regular basis. Like, I, lo I logged some hefty hours uh, previously doing data visualization, and there's a good chance if you're in an all-company meeting, uh, money's going to come up. And while you think, while you might think you need like a Harry Potter businessman pointing at the stock market kind of chart to communicate professionalism, I've always been a firm believer in less being more. So this is this is what it looked like for Flywheel uh, on a weekly basis uh, for our our sales revenue. You know, I was, a, I was a big believer in, you know, you, you want to put things in reference to a target, a goal or benchmark. And if possible, try and communicate only two data points, right? Like where you want to be and what your progress is toward that thing. Make it clearly labeled. This is just for the month of February. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, like, how are we doing in the month of February? Um, you know, kind of pacing towards that. Um, and if you're going to have multiple data points, make sure you keep them separated, right? Like don't put customers and dollars on the same graph. Keep them separated, kind of show kind of different different methods of, of progress for the same thing. And then finally, put it in perspective. Like not everyone's a number number cruncher. I am I am the, the furthest from a bean counter, but I, I do believe that having good data matters. And so you know when you're when you're taking things like churn versus uh, versus revenue and trying to kind of give a picture of like okay how much money are we actually making like adding those things together in a way that, you know, you're not expecting other people to do the math because they probably don't have the willpower to do it. You know, they probably just got enough willpower like put on pajama pants before joining the meeting. They're not going to do math uh, for you. Uh, but there's other ways, I think, of kind of getting people's attention um, in some creative ways. This, this next one is one uh, made uh, by a former coworker named Brett, who talked about our uh, performance uh, programs. And I'll, I'll play that for you here. Uh, visuals aren't everything. She she wanted to share an update about our professional uh, development program. Uh, she would she would make sure that this this jingle was seared into the brains of every single person uh, in the audience. If there's something you don't know and you want to grow, just put some pep in your step. I mean, like it is it's generic visuals. I think I think she got it on Fiverr or something. But like, but the the music was all original. And so when employees wanted to go to a conference, take a course or get a certification, like there was that earworm, right? Telling you that all you needed to do was put some pep in your step. If you go to Slack, you go to our, our internal intranet and you look for pep, you know where to go. Uh, because again, just absolute um, earworm content. Another great way that you can kind of make design matter um, in your work is just in the follow-up, right? Like I forget people's names 15 seconds after they tell them to me. And I certainly don't remember anything that's been said at each week's meeting. Uh, and that's why it's great to reinforce your content with a follow-up synopsis email and or a Slack post, like catch people on the channels they pay closest attention to. Make it pretty, make it readable, make it easy to find for future reference. It's extra work, but it goes a long way. Again, like part of making design matters is being intentional. Being intentional about people retaining information means repeating yourself. Um, and uh, this is where I'm gonna pivot to, to kind of answer uh, that, that question for our anonymous uh, attendee, uh, which is like, what if I don't have like enough content for, for weekly communications? Like I kind of alluded to it before, but I think I think the case still stands. Like not everything that you have to say is entirely a, about the business. And not every meeting needs to be an hour long or 30 minutes long. I think sometimes the things that we want to say to that question, like, why are you here? It's as simple as because we want you around, right? If you look at your non-work relationships, like especially your friends and your romantic partners, like these relationships are at will, kind of like employment, right? Like we keep contact and invest time on an ongoing basis because it's healthy and it's what keeps the people we love close to us. And the same is true at work, right? 
you know who these people are. You know the character in each, uh, you're, you're each a character in each other's lives by choice. Uh, and you're actively building a shared history with them. And you wouldn't come home to your partner and like not say a word to them for weeks on end, right? Like if pressed about the state of household finances, it would be weird to go radio silent, right? It would be bad to forget a birthday, to forget an anniversary. And if you look at the data uh, and anecdotes coming out of the great resignation of 2021, you see it time and time again, right? Like people saying to employers, like, I need you to see me as a whole human being. Like I need respect. I need to feel like my voice is heard. And I need to know like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> and so, um, you know, again, it, like this is the secret, like the answer to this question, like, why are you here? Doesn't have to be something profound. It can be as simple as just like regular reminder that like, we chose you because we like the work that you do. We want you to be happy at work. You want, we want you to be happy outside of work. Uh, one of my favorite traditions that we had at Flywheel was uh, with the new hire photo shoot. Every single new employee came in with props. They felt represented them. And, and we did these like highly stylized photo sessions. Uh, and these would turn into office artwork or ad campaigns. Uh, that maybe they'd just be your profile photo or in Slack and LinkedIn. Uh, but they would also be baked into the presentation deck libraries. So odds are at least once per quarter, like you would see your own face on screen when we are presenting all company information. Yeah. And at a time when so many companies are clamoring to be as inclusive as possible, like I love how we went just like a step beyond saying, we hope you can see yourself here. And then like, like went like fully literal with it. Like you are going to see yourself here, like, like your photograph all of the time. You are a core piece of the fabric of this company. And we are so glad you are here. And again, Making sure that your, your town halls, your all hands, your, your weekly meetings are reflective of your employees and, and kind of seeing them as whole, whole people. Um, you know, there's a few things that you can do, right? Like, are you talking about their work? <laughs> like, are you, are you shining a light on the accomplishments of individual departments? And again, like uh, to our anonymous attendee who's you know, struggling to come up with content, like again, like it's not all on you, right? Like, You've got other heads of other teams and things like that. They know the nuances of the departments. Like, let them have the mic. Let them get up and talk about stuff that they're proud of. Let them give shout outs to their team. It's going to mean the world to them uh, that they're given the opportunity to do it. And like, are you shining a light on, on the product teams and the teams that sell and support each of those products and kind of telling that story? Again, people just want to be seen and heard uh, as we go. Um, and then... Are you acknowledging their accomplishments and milestones? Uh, we had this really fun thing that uh, we did at Flywheel called uh, Fly Fives. Fly Fives and we're doing it live. <laughs> Again, we have a jingle for everything. Uh, but, but the idea was that you could kind of give people praise um, in, a, in a Slack channel just via, via form. It would, it would ping them. Um, and each week we would kind of read through um, the names of people who did something awesome living up to our values and we would give a, a nonsense prize away uh we ended up taking this exact same concept and bringing it to uh to wp engine except this time we built like a really robust slack app uh called hell yeah and hell yeah ended up becoming the thing that we would use um to power uh an award ceremony that was long standing at the vp engine but we kind of took it up a level um, called Supercharged. And this is the Supercharged Trophy. It's a really sweet piece of extruded concrete with a brass top and we blast your name and the value you lived up to uh, in, with lasers into the side of it. Um, but again, once a quarter, we take one of our town halls and we just go through the list of the hundreds of people who got nominated, you know, kind of pick a winner, have the, have the one of the, the nominees read, read a nice, uh, you know, uh, thing that they have to say about them. Uh, I know uh, uh, one of our, our CEO called me after the first one. It's like, you know, I don't know. Like, maybe it's because of the pandemic. Like, people just like aren't crying like they normally do during these. And, and like, it feels weird to say that, but like, it's true. Like, you want to go for for high emotional value. So we really made sure to like really hammer home the the kind of meaningful content um, in the nomination videos um, for future for future sessions, making sure that people really, really, really felt that their contributions and, and efforts were fully seen, fully touted, fully appreciated. Like this would be the highlight of their year um, that they get this. And so we put a lot of love and attention and polish into the supercharged awards to make sure that people feel uh, special. Another easy win, right, is 
having guest hosts, like keeping content fresh is hard when you have a weekly all company meeting. And like I mentioned before, one of the things that we want to avoid doing is conditioning employees to stop paying attention. Uh, every organization has a number of unsung heroes waiting for their time to shine. And chances are they'll be great if you give them a script and have them deliver news that might otherwise belong to a senior leader or a member, member of your people ops team. Uh, but your employees are paying close attention because it's somebody new. And you're giving the impression of a broader company buy-in when, when you have a not senior leader or decision maker up in front of the whole company and delivering news. Uh, at, at WP Engine, we uh, regularly have employee guest hosts for our weekly town hall. And one of my favorite things to do is to workshop with these guest hosts on hobbies or quirks that we can highlight and turn into content to keep people's attention up. Uh, <laughs> this, this is one of my favorite examples. <laughs> This was just a person who really was passionate about chicken tenders. And so we, we made a segment for in between each, each person that she introduced, uh, she would, she would give, uh, you know, a, a countdown to her, her top, to her top, uh, 10 favorite dipping sauces for chicken tenders uh, and chat went nuts for it. Like the hot takes on ketchup versus ranch versus cane sauce versus, you know, Chick-fil-A sauce. Like it's, it's harmless controversy. Uh, I love a good food debate uh, and just like, just, just playful. Uh, and it's that kind of stuff. Plus like a dollop of honey um, bar barbecue that uh, really makes up the signature flavor that we know as company culture. And, and on the topic of culture, as somebody who spent uh, a year with the head of culture in my title, I, I can really tell you um, that it's the little stuff that goes a long way. So much of what we love about our company dynamics are rooted in nostalgia for past experiences. The problem is our new employees don't always get to experience them and things inevitably change. And if you want to dodge the pitfalls of back in my day, things were better like that mentality. Here's my tip. You got to make new experiences. Like you can absolutely manufacture a new inside joke every month if you wanted to. And that sounds weird, but like it's, a, it's true. Jamie's seen it. She knows. Uh, and this is the thing that cockroach costume thing, like that, th this is that, like, the th the, this is the thing that's like next to impossible to explain to your bosses about why it works, but it works. And when you do it, people see it, people love it, people want more of it. Uh, and for the sake of this presentation, like I wanted to try and put a name on this. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is kind of like what I would consider my niche, niche, right? Like this is my specialty innovation. Like I didn't, I didn't contribute a lot to the world of internal communications, but if I could rem be remembered for one thing, it's this, it's, it's the MVP. Uh, which in my case uh, stands for uh, minimum viable professionalism. Uh, and I'm being serious, well, not actually being serious. Uh, your customer voice is not the same thing as your employee voice. So swap out that polo shirt for a graphic tee or maybe put a blazer on top of it if you absolutely have to, uh, but get rid of your polished talking points and communicate with your employees in a tone of voice that more closely mimics day-to-day -day conversation. That, may, like, that mimics the kind of media that they're likely to consume uh, when they log off. Like you wanna make work feel safe and comfortable, make it a closer match to how things are on the outside. And this is gonna be different for every company you work for, but depending on where you work, it might mean it's okay to drop some PG-13 language. And at a minimum, allow yourself to have some fun with your employees. Like it is stupid stuff, like embedding Sopranos gifts, telling people what today's lunch is going to be. It was the day we had chicken parm. And so I just had to drop Tony Soprano in there. And when the pandemic hit and we had a bunch of people from Texas in, we just like, hey, all we eat is corn in Nebraska. Uh, you know, we, we invented a fake lunch and uh, we, we kind of let that like go from there. And this eventually turned into people doing like honest, like DoorDash food reviews as little video segments. Um, but it's again, like letting people just be weirdly aggressively online. Uh, so one of the prizes for, for the fly fives was you get to watch the B movie, but every time they say B, it gets faster over lunch today. Like it's nonsense. Um, but like, again, like one of the coolest things ab about it is like, you're creating a ritual, but that ritual always has a surprising twist. Um, you know, there's a lot of just like little things you can do. Like, Hitting the Zoom chat with like, hey, is a hot dog a sandwich just in the middle of a meeting just to keep people's attention up? Like it is okay to just make content that is solely to be like, hey, eyes back up here. <laughs> even, even if it is dumb. Again, like 
we build a culture every day. It's about putting a clever wrapper on something mundane for the purpose of sparking joy. And I'll just also just making sure that people pay attention because when they logged into work today, the last thing they were expecting to see was this. Howdy neighbor. Now you might be asking yourself, what's this here cartoon doing in my town hall? And that's a reasonable question to ask. Maybe I'm a hallucination brought on by bad posture at your desk, and only you can see me. <laughs> nah, I'm just joshing. The name's Sparky, cause I'm a spark plug, see? And I've got some news that's really gonna get your WP engines roaring. But there's more. Workday learning now includes LinkedIn learning as well, with thousands of new courses. Ten hours straight. He's a machine. Next, move past a security dog named Ruffles. Turns out he got that name because he loves Ruffles brand potato chips. Good boy, Ruffles. He didn't see a thing. And I thought to myself, what would the legendary swag store tycoon Walter P. Engine do in the face of such adversity? And the answer hit me like a bolt of lightning. We're gonna have us a swag sale. That's right everybody, come on down to Walter P. Engine's Swag Store Emporium. For the entire month of November, we're practically giving the swag away. Okay. Again. Uh, this is minimum viable professionalism. So Julius, to your question, like it, it's great creating those uh, in theory, but how do you compete with other priorities? Um, the answer is you don't drop those other priorities, right? Like you, you, keep, you keep bringing them in and I call them minimum viable on purpose. Like these are, these are low effort, they're fun. Uh, you give them the people who have the time and energy to do it and, and can weave that in. Like, again, if you, if you don't take the time to do it, if you don't give people the opportunity to, 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 to relax, have fun, build culture, like you're just not going to make time for it. Like, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit like, again, to, to bring back that relationship metaphor, like, like, yes, I love you, but I couldn't be bothered enough to, to cook you dinner, uh, to bring you, to bring you flowers on our anniversary to these other things. Like we take the time to do them because taking the time to do them demonstrates that we care. And so um, again, it, it is about making time. And, and if, and if this is a thing, if, if communications is a thing that, um, and building culture is a thing that is valuable to you, then you take the time to do it. Uh, and so, uh, so uh, to the question of like, whether or not we create all the videos inside each week, or do we have other resources to do that? We, yeah, we, we create them uh, just kind of on an intermittent basis. You know, a lot of times we just kind of stick to our standard slide deck. You know, we let, we let people kind of fall into a rhythm. There's, there's, there's regular cadence of things. There's kind of like some similarly designed things. So like it's, it's a mix of like repetition, right? Like we create those like branded assets for strategic pillars or company values. And we'll kind of like use those as callbacks. But when we want to make something loud and splashy, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hit the people with it. You can't do it every week because then you're just like creating a cacophony. Uh, and this was a really cool thing that Jamie told me actually once back in the day. It was like making sure that like when we do something stupid like a cockroach costume, right? That like for each for each like town hall, we're doing it for the thing that matters most in that meeting. So if like you are only going to retain one piece of information, it should be the thing that we make the noisiest. Uh, and so. Um, that that is how we do it um i will tell you my secret for making a lot of that stuff is it, a just filming stuff uh, partnering with other people to to help make that stuff um and then dropping 200 dollars a year on a subscription to envato elements <laughs> which is just like a catalog of bizarre like graphics templates uh sound effects you know whatever you need <laughs> Like just having them on deck and ready to go. Um, I have a stream deck on my on my desktop here, um, so I can kind of do some fun stuff on the fly. Kind of having that stuff um, ready to go uh, for when we need it. Again, it's a little bit about planning in advance, knowing what you're going to need, doing callbacks, um, all that other stuff. But um, I want to give us some more time for more questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, Again, the name's Phil Jarrett. I am the uh, senior manager of internal communications and brand at 
WP Engine. And there I am on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you all for your time. That's really, really nice of you. Uh, this, uh, okay, come on. Please. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have to. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. All 36 of you. Uh, this is, that was more than I was expecting. This is great. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. Okay, uh, question time. Uh, Jamie, anybody else? Do we have anything? Um, I mean, I have some follow ups too, I think. I know the resources question is is probably numero uno on everybody's minds. And I think one of the things like currently WP Engine 1200 employees has an internal comms team. Totally get it. We did things like this, not at this production level, obviously, but but things like it at Flywheel, even when we were 20, 50 employees. And I think a lot of that just came from um letting employees be a part of the experience and bring their own talents to it. So if there was someone on the team who was a great photographer, you know, we utilized that. So you can kind of take like a, an inventory <laughs> sort of, of like talents on your team or like having a theater major be like the MC of the event. I don't know. I mean, kind of talk through like how you've done this again, maybe at a smaller smaller organization yeah. or when we were smaller and how you were able to kind of achieve MVPs of it. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And some of the times it's just like that, that like white hot panic of just like, I need to get things done, but I want things done in a particular way. Uh, um, you know, that, that will, that will kind of motivate you to get there. But like one of the things that I think was special about Flywheel and specifically like the design matters value um, is like, you cannot underestimate like the value of planning ahead. And so like having a really good slide deck template and access to common resources of photos and things like that, like it makes it so everybody's making something clean. And I had a whole section in this presentation deck. I was afraid I was gonna run long, so, so, I, so I cut it, right? But like uh, the notion of like, does your slide deck encourage good behavior? <laughs> like, did you create a template that has like four side by six side, uh, like, text boxes because if you did then like people are going to feel inclined to like cram all the words on the page like people are just going to be inclined to do that so like I really do believe that like you know again like this cannot be a solo show like it cannot just be internal communications it cannot just be the CEO at any scale like you have to inspire people to make design matter and that's it starts with creating resources but then it's just like setting the bar <laughs> like that was one of my favorite things that we that we did at Flywheel too was like every every quarter we would have these retreats and every retreat would have these skits and these skits became videos and the videos got increasingly elaborate over time till we basically had like a miniature film festival because everybody wanted the title of like having the best video that quarter and like it became common for individual teams when they were presenting for a week to have something like wild and elaborate. Like we'd probably see something that like knock your socks off like once a month and it would be coming from somebody different every single time. And like, again, like when you create an environment where people feel like included and like empowered to just kind of flex those creative muscles, like that's so huge. Uh, I talk about this all the time with kind of like from the inclusion lens of, of employees uh, pulling them in, like, like, I never aspired to be someone promoting managed WordPress hosting. Like that's just like, it really, it was like when I grow up, right? Like, that's not, that's not what I wanted to do. Like I'm an artsy dude. I love music. I love, I love video. I love photography. I love writing. Um, like those are the things that scratch my itch. And like each of our companies is full of people uh, just like that. And like one of the, I think one of the most gracious and good things we can do for people that also also has the added benefit of being good for your company is like helping people scratch what I call like their existential itches. Like <laughs> I get to, I get to, yeah, do my day job doing support, but I also get to write silly jingles for work or I get to make videos or I get to present in front of the company and feel valued uh, by people. And so like, that is, I think, one of the coolest things. Again, we can inspire people to kind of match our energy and go from there. Uh, you got to plant the seed. You got to do some of the early work, but like people will match that energy. It's, it's pretty great. 
There is a um, great question here on the topic kind of 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 inclusion around generational differences and um, whether or not or what kind of strategies you would use to engage Gen X or boomer generations. That's it. And like you need to diversify your communication channels like that's the first one. So it's like if people don't want to, um, you know, tune in for this kind of thing, uh, you know, making sure that there's there's that that kind of email um, opportunity or a Slack opportunity for people to get the same information. That being said, I, I would say that there's maybe a little bit less of a generational gap than I think a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, go for, and uh, you know, or, or people kind of assume there is. And and a lot of that has to do with the fact that, like, like I don't care what age you are, like you're probably spending your evenings watching television and also looking at your phone at the same time. Like, like I, I bet you, like regardless of age, like you would say that your 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 um, attention span has probably diminished in the last 10, 15 years because like you're inundated with noise. Like if your work is using something like Slack, the volume of like one-off messages that you get on a day-to-day basis has increased. And like part of the strategy has to do with adapting to that environment, right? Like we kind of have to match the noise level and sometimes we have to disrupt ourselves with new content. Um, so again, while it's, it might be funny and it might be aggressively online, we might associate aggressively online with millennials or Gen Z. The fact of the matter is everybody's easily distracted. And if I can distract you into paying attention, like I'm going to do it. I think there's probably something special about the employee led content piece too, where yeah. if you're letting people create kind of their own content and their own sort of segments, you'll, you'll end up with something that reflects kind of your own company culture. And, you know, you might not, you might not wind up with the cockroach costume, but you might wind up with kind of your own, your own version of that. And it's one of my favorite things too, is like with, with this kind of content too, when you're making something that's fun, like you get to kind of like remix pop culture and and like, you are not limited to like the most current stuff and sometimes I feel like only going for like the current zeitgeist is a little bit like tacky (laughs) it's like hello kids like it's a little it's a little trying too hard where it's like if I make something that feels like an early 80s infomercial like that's something that's recognizable to gen x that's something that's recognizable to, to baby boomers like it's 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 remixing a thing that like a lot of us have seen um, you know, so like we have made alien versus predator content. We have, we have made, um, you know, again, like weird stop motion, like silent film stuff, like that Walter P engine thing, like started with like a Ken Burns civil war documentary and turned into a used car salesman, like pitch, like it is, it is aggressive. It's weird, but like it's multi-generational, like by design. Cool. Well, thank you, Phil. This was amazing. I agree with Joy completely. And yeah, I'll drop um, your LinkedIn in the chat. Perfect. And then, yeah, we'll send uh, the recording and everything um, as a follow-up, but that should just about do it. Killer. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or just want to chit chat, like always happy to do it. Hit me up. I'm, I'm happy to happy to talk. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.